Uh, orchids to me are one of the most beautiful house plants. I have several of them, probably about 15 or 20 orchids in my personal collection. Many of them are Phalaenopsis orchids, just like this one. I also have some Oncidium orchids and Dendrobium Phalaenopsis orchids and other types as well. Today we're going to be repotting this Phalaenopsis orchid. It's a very simple process. So I wanted to show you guys how to repot a Phalaenopsis orchid because it is super, super simple. And it is one of those things that uh, because orchids have a stigma of being uh, a bit high maintenance and a lot of people don't want to learn how to take care of them, I want to make sure that I make this as simple and easy for you guys as possible. There's just a few things that you guys are going to need for this project. Of course, you're going to need an orchid. This is just a regular Phalaenopsis orchid that I got from a big box store, Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, if they have it. Uh, you're also going to need some new potting media. Uh, and this is going to be a bark media. This is a bit fine. Um, you can also use a coarser bark media or you can mix different medias together to give you the consistency that works best for your plants and in your, uh, your environment. I am here in the south of the United States and so it's quite humid here in the summers and media tends to break down quickly. Uh, an orchid will need to be repotted every two years. For me, I have to repot the ones that I have in pots every single year because the media just breaks down so very quickly in the summertime. So in addition to our media, we are also going to need a new pot. You want your pot to be larger than the old pot to give that root system uh, a bit of space to grow. What I also used here was a pair of pliers. And I also used uh, any type of a bolt. I used just a bolt that I had uh, in uh, laying around from an old project that I was doing to add some additional air holes to the sides of the pot. Orchid roots, because they do typically grow up in the trees, their roots are exposed to air most of the time. So you need to have a lot of air holes in the pot that you're gonna put your orchid in so that way they don't get uh, rotted out. And then really good drainage on the bottom so that way when you water your orchid, the water can go through it and drain out completely. The media is gonna hold on to just a little bit of that moisture uh, for a while and then it'll release it back to the plant slowly as it begins to dry out. Now the next thing that I did need was a pair of scissors. We're gonna do some trimming and cleaning on this plant as we go along. And to sterilize your scissors, anytime that you're working with plants, whether they're house plants like orchids or plants in your garden, you, you want to make sure that you are sterilizing all of your tools. So I have um, a tall shot glass, which is, I just find it to be easy for dunking in a pair of scissors with some this is isopropyl alcohol, and this is the 91%. I got this at CVS. Any drugstore would have it, Walmart, Target, Rite Aid, etc. Uh, you want to make sure that you are sterilizing your tools so that way if you are working on multiple plants, you are not transferring bacteria or viruses from one plant that may be sick and you may not see it to another plant that's completely healthy. So the last thing that you're going to need is a hanger. This is optional. This is something that I use with my orchids uh, and I'll tell you why when we get to that part. Uh, but this is not something that you have to do. This is just something that I like to do myself. Um, so take it if you like it and if you don't, that's perfectly fine. I look forward to your comments on that uh, particular little hack um, when this gets posted. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the orchid out of the old pot. Now this is the old pot that the orchid came in from the box store. You can see it still has the tags on it and everything. We're going to go ahead and take this out. Generally, when you get an orchid from uh, Lowe's Target, they are going to be inside of another pot that is going to be a clear plastic pot. That's perfectly fine. This is just for decoration. Um, but as you can see, and I hope that this is picking up on the camera, there are a lot of roots. All of these green roots here are healthy orchid roots. And you can see across the bottom here how very root bound this plant 
plant is. It even has some roots coming out of the bottom. And unfortunately, most of those are probably going to be lost in the transfer. Orchid roots are very fleshy. Um, and so any sort of a disruption is probably going to cause some of those to break off. I see this one is uh, dying back a bit as well. So we're going to go ahead and take this out. And it comes out fairly easily. I'm going to clean this off later so I don't mind uh, that this is uh, kind of going all over the countertop here. Um, and again, look at this. That entire bottom of that pot was nothing but roots. So we want to take away all or at least the large majority of this old potting media and we want to tease these roots to just release all of that media because we don't want any of this old media going into the new pot it could have bugs or fungus uh, bacteria anything like that in it so we want to get rid of as much of this as possible this media to me looks like um, it's got some sphagnum moss in here. It also has some bark, and it looks like it also has some coconut husk, um, which are all really great media on their own. I personally don't like sphagnum moss for orchids. To me, it holds a little bit too much moisture, um, and definitely not for Phalaenopsis orchids. There are definitely other types of orchids that have a higher uh, water requirement and like to be a little bit more moist more of the time um, and you can certainly use sphagnum moss for those. I personally don't like sphagnum for my phalaenopsis orchids. Now what we're going to do here quickly is do a little bit of cleanup. I'm going to pull these spikes uh, out here while it was in the store waiting for us to come and purchase it. So I'm going to take I'll dry those off and allow those to air dry quickly. I'm gonna take some of this alcohol, put it on a paper towel. You can also use a spray bottle, but because I don't wanna waste that alcohol, I am going to just wipe down the inside of this pot with the alcohol. And we're just gonna allow this to sit for a minute. That's going to air dry that alcohol is going to evaporate off and we'll allow that to sit i'm going to put that over there now while that's sitting i'm just going to address the orchid roots and some things that i'm noticing on this plant i'm going to get a few more of these this root system actually looks really really well looks really good here um, there are a couple of roots here that i do want to look at and uh, address and trim back these are the roots here that were in the bottom of the pot. And I'll bring this around so you guys can see it a bit closer. These are the roots that were in the bottom of the pot. These roots, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this back. These roots are dying back. This in here is completely hollow. A healthy orchid root is going to appear like a silvery green color and it will be firm to the touch. If the roots are hollow, they just feel like they have a little twig on the inside of them, those roots are either dead or dying back. You can see what this looks like here. This is actually sort of the vein part that goes up the entire root. And outside of it, this is the spongy part that actually absorbs the water and nutrients. So we're gonna cut back a few of those. And we'll just grab the scissors, lay my orchid on the side. And you just wanna make a nice clean cut. Um, anything that is alive, anything on these roots that is firm to the touch, that like silvery greenish color. You wanna leave all of that in there. The orchid is definitely using that. Um, and so you wanna leave those in there. This one really, really doesn't look that bad. I'm really, really shocked. A lot of times you go to the 
big box stores and the, the roots on the orchids are just terrible. So now we have a little leaf here. Um, this is one of the earlier leaves and it's just uh, broken a bit and it is a uh, yellow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off. It's just gonna make the plant look a little bit better. You wanna cut it off as close to the base as possible. Um, and then we'll put that out there. Yeah, this looks really, really good. So we're gonna go ahead. Our pot is now dry. And we are going to put just a piece of paper in here. So it's just a piece of a paper bag. I do this, not every orchid uh, keeper is going to do this. Uh, my orchid media is a little bit finer. If I were using very large pine bark mulch uh, or very large bark orchid mix, I may not need to use this. But what I don't wanna have happen here is that I put this uh, media in here and it ends up falling out the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put a piece of paper in here just to cover up the holes on the bottom. Uh, it will still allow water to go through. And you can, if you want to, you can poke a few holes in here um, just to help with that water getting out. Nothing wrong with that. But this is gonna keep the media from escaping through those bottom holes. And then we're gonna just put a little bit of media in here like this. And we just want a very, very little bit there. We'll bring our orchid back in. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, and so you really want your orchid to be sitting at about the same height above the pot that it was, that it was sitting at in the previous pot. So if your orchid was sitting right at the top of the rim in the old pot, you want to not have your media come above that level. What will happen is, is that that media, when it gets wet, it will cause the orchid to uh, rot at the base. If your orchid rots at the base, then it's, it's a goner. It's not gonna come back. So you definitely want to avoid that. Now that we have our orchid sitting here, we're going to just Come around like this and we're going to just backfill with the new media put some like this and then I usually just tap it and it'll go into all of those little spaces a little bit more tap it into the spaces come around to the other side and do the same thing put our media in here We're just gonna tap it into the spaces. And we'll do this until um, the orchid is where we need it to be and it looks pretty secure. Now this is what it'll look like once your orchid is repotted. And as you can see, there are a few roots that we can still see. Now you guys can see that this orchid is repotted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you my little trick for using the wire hanger. So what you wanna do here is you wanna break the, the hanger apart like this, and then you wanna create a 90 degree angle. This 90 degree angle is going to sit across your uh, pot and, uh, and anchor it on one side of the pot. What I'm gonna do here, very similarly to how I made the holes in the side of the pot, watch out Apollo. I'm going to just heat the end of that uh, piece of hanger, that piece of wire. You need something that's gonna be very stiff because you want it to, uh, to be able to hold this orchid in place. So orchids are plants that like to be stable. They really like to have a good footing in their media. And especially when a plant is newly repotted, so what I'm gonna do with that piece of hanger, that piece of wire, is I'm going to use it because it's hot, I'm gonna run it across one side, run it along the base of the orchid on this side, and then run it out the other side so that this will press this down and it'll give the orchid a bit more stability. So this should be ready. Let me grab my pliers. Okay. 
and you're gonna take this and you really want to come in you better know where you're going you want to come in low on the lip because you don't want this uh, hot wire to end up pulling up through the plastic we're just gonna come in like this okay you want you don't want to burn your orchid so we're gonna take this across like so And then we are going to push it through the other side, okay? And I'll give you a close up of what that looks like. So we pushed it through this side, brought it over that root and that leaf, which I'm gonna pull that media back, and then we brought it through this side. Now, if you want, you can bend this side as well. Just remember that if you bend this side as well, you're gonna have to either try to unbend it if you want to repop the orchid later, or you're gonna have to cut the pot. I typically will leave this side straight, and then when I get ready to repop this orchid, I can just pull this out like a pin, and then I can take out the entire uh, root ball of the orchid in one to two years when I need to repot it. As you can see, this orchid is quite a bit more stable and it is ready to go into a nice decorative pot or you can leave it like this. I hope that you guys will take a chance on orchids. They're wonderful plants to grow. They're really, really easy. Phalaenopsis orchids, especially in my opinion, uh, and they give you a wonderful uh, just beautiful color Phalaenopsis orchids do tend to bloom in the winter. So they're really, really great to have just that pop of color in the winter time when you just are looking at white snow outside and gray skies to have that beautiful pop of color in your home. It just is gonna add that bit of uh, enjoyment to every single day. It's also great because they tend to bloom for weeks or even months on end. So hopefully you'll try this. I look forward to you guys' uh, comments and uh, commenting on the procedure as well as that little hack with the uh, wire hanger. So hopefully you guys will try that and uh, let me know how it worked out for you. Thank you so much for watching this video, for staying with me on, on uh, today's episode. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a great day. Love you guys.